This is a homebrew podcast. Um, guys, I we got a letter on our door. Um, it's signed from uh, someone named Megan. Do we know Megan? Oh, uh, Megan. Megan was always kind enough. I think we took a couple of classes together. In fact, uh, what did she say about me? Um, well, it sounds like some of the other residents have complained that we're being a little bit too loud. What? Uh, they're saying we're being too loud. Uh, who's <laughs> saying that? Who's being too loud? Uh, us? I, I don't know. I don't believe that one bit. I'm never loud. Okay, well, you read it then. It says we're being too loud and we need to quiet down or we'll be kicked out. As far as I know, this mechanism is out to get me. I leave one door partially cracked open and her astral kitty escapes in the dead of night. I took care of that. I found a skunk and put some stars on it and gave her a new one. I took care of that. I don't think a skunk is an appropriate substitute for a cat. I'm pretty sure they look pretty similar. I mean, I guess if you paint it, but... I didn't have enough time. Well, regardless, I do think she's making too much of a stink about this, but we should find a way to make amends. Okay, well, um, thank you for the notice, Megan. Sorry for being so loud. I promise we'll be more attentive to quiet hours next time. And Lucian will find and return your cat. I found something. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Mythcraft the Podcast. Let's go around and meet our phobic fellows, starting with Andy. Kiris Mara. I don't like baths anyways. Jake. Daromir. Uh, is it just me, or is everything looking a little creepier out there? Mal. Thorn, I don't understand why everyone is so on edge all of a sudden. Roger. Televayu Lusanare. Death often comes from above. And Tanner. Sherman, water sucks anyways. Last week on Mythcraft the Podcast, we uh, saw a little bit more of what is going on in the present with our heroes raiding a keep. We also spent a lot of time figuring out what the heroes were up to 18 months ago, and they started on a mission to uh, exfiltrate a uh, double agent behind Rashalani lines. Let's pick back up in the past with the heroes on this trail at night. Is everyone accounted for appropriately? Everyone have all of their appendages yet? I'm in one I'm piece. good. I don't like birds. Then why yeah. did you ride one? It picked me up out of the sky. I did not want to fall on the ground. Mm. It was pretty cool. Thank you. I must say, I would have done my best to attempt to catch you. I make no promises in the future if I would have been successful, though. And that is why I took care of it myself. Cannot rely on other people all the time. Well said. Thorn, do you have a, a, a battle name? Um, I'm, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well... Toman will side-eye curious. <laughs> <sighs> they call me Horde Breaker. Horde Breaker. Because I've been known to break hordes of people. And uh, mm -hmm. if you don't have a battle name yet, I feel this is the perfect opportunity for you to claim one. Skybreaker, Skyfaller, Skyrider, Deathwing. Deathwing Ooh. is pretty cool. Deathwing does sound very cool. Thorn at Deathwing. Deathwing it is. Oh, that is a powerful name. I like it. I think it suits me. Hey, you okay there, Daramir? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It just spooked me is all. Yeah, me too. I uh, looked into its eyes and I saw death. I think I'm okay now. I just punched it. Are we going to keep moving? We should. Yeah, let's, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say we're losing daylight, but that's long past. Pretty, pretty dark. South? North? I don't actually know where we are right now. <laughs> <Kira That's>, does. <laughs> that's a great question. You would be heading somewhat south. Weast. South. East. <laughs> southeast. Sweast. I guess the better question was <laughs> towards or away from that water? <laughs> uh, alongside. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can make your way along the stream. Curious can keep it as out of sight as possible. I'm gonna get off the Scourge Deed and put the Scourge Deed between me and the water. Go. So I can't yeah. see it. Good at call. So you're doing okay. Did the Scourge Deed get a phobia as well? 
The Scourge Seed is afraid of deer. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> and other and deer like creatures. Or, elk or moose. Mm hmm. Caribou. No antlers near that one. For no reason whatsoever. Uh, what's the what's the prevalence of, of deer in these here woods? <laughs> MC? <laughs> it's like temperate woods. Pretty common. <laughs> Great. Great. Is it Tommen that's holding the torch? Yes. Dharma would, would go up closer to Tommen to try to be a little closer to the fire. Yeah. Hey, little man. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't call me little man. What? what? <laughs> You are a small of stature. It seems a very reasonable thing to call it you. My bad, my bad. Slap you on the back. Is that your battle name? Mm. Little man. Uh, th this cannot be a name that sticks. I... <laughs> Deathwing and little man. Wow. Hey, at least I got the cooler one. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll find you a, a battle name. Or do you, do you already have one? I don't mean to assume. Uh, I, I don't. All right. Tillman, I really think battle names are kind of your thing. I mean, everyone in the Silver Quills has them. Ooh, I have quills. Telve, do you have a battle name? Sherman? I do not uh, have a battle name, no. I do not as well. Hmm. The Friendly? I am not opposed to it. Yeah, keep hanging out. I'll give you one. Very well. Yay. I do think we should probably get going. We've made quite a fuss here. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm assuming some of this conversation is happening on the road. Oh, before we go, I, I would like to take some of the feathers from the uh, that beast. I will take a roll. You can certainly grab a couple feathers, but if you roll a high scavenging, then, I don't know, you'll get like, the high quality fly. Uh. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you get four feathers. Let's pretend I didn't roll that. Yeah, exactly. You get four feathers. Oh, four. Okay, that works. Can I use applied force to try to squeeze more feathers off of the... <laughs> I mean, if we're spending... It explodes. Like, if we're taking a rest by the bird, you can strip it down and... and... No, I'm good. But these are big feathers, right? Sure, they can be, like, from the wings. Okay, cool. Like, stiff, like you would use for a quill pen. I find it hard to believe that uh, this is for writing. What is your purpose? Are you making quills with this? Um, I'm... I'm not really sure right now. I just feel like I should take some things from it. I have seen the, the little uh, squirrel one making arrows. I I think maybe some feathers might help. Ah, ah, very well. This will love you. As the night progresses, we have uh, pushed... I think we've done a 12-hour march at this point. Does the party want to try for two more hours at the risk of gaining more fatigue? I mean, I am already at two. I also am already fatigued. Weakness. But what good does it do us to show up in the morning? We should probably try to work at night, no? It will help us with the element of surprise. Kiris, can I ride on your steed? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> on second thought. I find this piece <laughs> remarkably unsettling. That's the point. It's a little difficult for my uh, small legs to keep up with yours, so... I'm sure he doesn't care, and if he does, I don't care, so go for it. Nathan, how much... Like, can we estimate how long is left? It's about a 16-hour hike, so you're looking at four more hours. Okay. And it just started turning dark for Shermie's mm -hmm. plan. Like, would we be getting there at the break of dawn, where it's, we should just sleep? Or we would be getting there with plenty of darkness? You left Pash at like between seven and eight in the morning so add 12 hours to that it's about we'll, we'll call it 10 at night right now i did write down we walk until 8 p.m so you must have given us that before we got into combat okay okay yeah so uh we'll re rewind that clock two hours we'll say it's about 8 p.m right now the party could get to the uh, keep by midnight at risk of being exhausted or set up camp now. And we can gain multiple fatigue points? Each time you gain fatigue, you gain one death point. So that happens over and over. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, let's keep pushing. If we get too exhausted, we get to sleep later. Sounds good to me. From the back of the Scourge Steed. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone make an endurance check again. Did I potentially get out of doing that from not walking? Sure. Yay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Needed that. Needed that. Needed that. 
16 for Sherman. The 5 for Telve. At what point do you want me to start making these for the Scourge Steed? That is a great question. The uh, Scourge Steed, were you writing the Scourge Steed initially? Shermy was. I was. Shermy yeah. was. And we've been going at like a normal marching pace. We'll say uh, on the next one. Okay. I think Toman failed that one too. I'm looking for a 12 or higher at this point. That should have been a 20 for me. Okay. Mine should have been a 20 as well, but it was a 5. <laughs> <laughs> I just missed 15 points. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tove, are you okay? You're looking a little worn. I am used to forced marching to a certain degree, but not over these uh, logs and rocks. It's not my terrain, you say. What is your terrain? What do you walk on? Typically from one shelf to another, maybe from my desk uh, to a bed. Uh, oftentimes I find myself employed in uh, more roles of the archivist, not necessarily traipsing through the woods. Books. Books can take you far if you know how to read. Mm-hmm. Books. That is true. So I've heard. Fists can take you farther. Should we keep going? Yeah, let's uh, let's hope books can get us through tonight. Books. We're surrounded by everything that makes books. You are right. Maybe I feel more comfortable here than previously anticipated. Thank you for helping me to understand something I did not previously understand. You're intolerable. As, I hope you know that. <laughs> as the conversation <laughs> continues, the scourge steed suddenly comes to an abrupt halt. No. Thorn oh. smacks into the the back of the scourge steed's neck. I drop a book. <sighs> my books. <laughs> <sighs> it's like sniffing the air. Its eyes are huge. Oh, what's wrong with you? I think it senses danger. Oh, great again. What? Can I have everyone make an awareness check? Above table, are we rolling for deer? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do investigating? Mm. Or tracking? Sure. Tracking. Animal handling? Tracking. <laughs> <laughs> animal handling. I mean, it's the Scorch Deer. Yeah. Oh uh, God. Animal handling would be fine, too. Tracking or animal handling. Well, that's still a 13. With that, you know that it's afraid of whatever is nearby. After a moment, Toman spots a moose that is just <laughs> eating some lichen on the tree, maybe 40 feet off in the distance. <laughs> what? A moose? All this for a moose? Listen, it's useless. I don't know what to tell you. Well, then well, why did we bring The Scourge Steed just side-eyes you. Just so you know, Nathan, this creature can communicate with me. <laughs> Thoughts okay. and ideas. Okay, okay. <laughs> Your boss, that thing sucks. We should leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's just been choosing to do the ree noise. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. That's, that is what it's saying. That's not a sound. <laughs> <laughs> Retreat. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh, God. I don't. Can somebody go scare this stupid moose away? Yeah, all right. <laughs> After nobody <laughs> says anything, <laughs> so that's over it. Everybody just looks at Tome. <laughs> right. He spooks the moose, jumps out of the way before he gets trampled. The moose runs away. Let's keep going. Hopefully we don't find any more moose. Meese? No more moose? Meese. Meese? Moose. 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 I don't know. That is a new one. Hey, book boy. Is it moose? Moose. Mm. Yes, it is. Well, it is certainly not Moosen. I, I can tell you that, uh, certainly. Uh, the acceptable, uh, singular, Moosai, or, or, or Moose, if there are multiple. Moosai. Moosai, yes. I don't believe that. Yeah, well, that is your choice, if you do not wish to believe me. Moosen sounds better than Moosai. I agree. That's what I'm saying. Let's have everyone make one more endurance check. Oh. As we press on... Net 20, I am so nerd. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I needed that. Nice. Net 20, for sure, me. Permission to not nice. roll again. Uh, yes, but the Scourge Steed has two now. Oh, no. Please don't fail me. Scourge Steed's got an 18. Okay. All right. Scourge Steed is doing just fine. Toman is not, for whatever reason. Is everybody good? Do we need to stop? Book boy? Sherman? I'm doing all right. 
since you've helped expand my horizons on this terrain, I feel more at ease. I, I am all right. Toman, you good back there? Yeah, I'm good. Let's uh, let's find this agent and uh, and get out of here. Having walked for 16 hours, almost uninterrupted, the uh, party's feet are no doubt aching, even if mechanically you're doing more or less okay. You uh, come to a descending hill. There's a little bit of a clearing, and uh, where the hill slopes back up on the other side of the valley, you see a keep that is silhouetted in the midnight sky. It's a black keep against a dark blue sky. More the absence of stars than anything that shows where it is. And uh, there are a couple flickering torches along the walls and at the front gate that mark its presence as well. Now what? Are we able to see if there's anybody outside? You can make an awareness check at perceiving if you have it. Are we there already? Oh, we've been walking quite a while. We might be. I did it again, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural funny. Shermie's just showing off at this point. Shermie, <laughs> what do your cat eyes see? <laughs> my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what do my special eyes see? Yeah, you see uh, a uh, team of uh, two guards on the ground in front of the main gate, and then two more backing them up on the uh, parapet overhead. There are a couple tents outside of the keep as well, but it looks like most activity is going on inside. Obviously, you can't see through stone walls, but you very faintly hear the uh, commotion of, uh, like, kind of the rustling in the still night. You hear some footfalls, some murmured voices that kind of carry over the expanse in the valley, the wickering of some livestock that are asleep. Shermie is the only one to pick up that much detail. The rest of us see the torches. It appears we have arrived, my scrungly friend. Uh, it is guarded, though. It does appear that there are a few outside, two on the ground and two up ahead. It doesn't appear to be too active on the outside, but there is movement on the inside, so we will not, uh, I assume, as we all could have guessed, we will not be alone. Right, I mean, we, I anticipated that. We're here to rescue a, a double agent, so I'm sure he's, well, I hope he's in there. I'm sure he's behind enemy lines somewhere. Right. Is, we didn't happen to get a landscape or blueprints of the keep, did we? Maybe we should have asked where to expect our informant. Well, I think this is, I, I actually don't know if this is technically Jehozren or Rochelon, so I, I don't know what, kind of schematic to expect. Right. Great. You're going to sneak in? Are you going to try to convince them to let us in? Are we going to just set fire to the tents and go run behind while they panic? I like that. Well, that sounds rather dangerous for, for I everybody prefer involved. prefer the, uh, the quiet approach. Well, what does the quiet approach look like? Would I have been able to see anything else as far as like maybe an entrance, maybe a way that we can get in? From this angle, the only entrance you can see is the gate that is guarded by two okay. on the ground, two on the parapet. Right. Maybe there's a, a way through the back, some hidden passage, sewer, something. I love hidden passages. If we have the time, I'd say we invest a little bit, we'll scope out the sides, use the time that we have saved getting here so quickly, to see if there is some type of uh, changing of shifts. See where did it come from, where did it go. Uh, let's use the time that we have saved. I suppose I better extinguish my, my torch too, so that we can sneak effectively. Uh, yeah. Sh sure. I, if, yeah. This is a very sound plan. Why do you seem so uh, uneasy about it? Just a little jumpy, that's all. Toman will drop the torch down and stamp it out, kick some dirt over it, put it back How in his bag. The walls. The walls are probably they would they would be twenty feet tall. They're not that tall from the ground, but because it's built on a hill, it is pretty well defended against a like against an army. A smaller team would have better luck for sure. Telve, what about your book? Would you be able to 
get somebody or something on the inside like that? Can we just tie a rope to it and go over the wall? Tie the rope to my book, or is that what you are proposing? Yes. I think that might be somewhat conspicuous if we simply let the book float there by the walls while the guards are still going about their business. I mean, you don't know what's on the other side. That is true. I, if you are willing to uh, wait and be patient, uh, Sherman, do you see if there is any type of uh, maybe crates or something for delivery stock? If I can get access to something that is to be delivered into the keep, I can look through it using my senses to get a lay of the land. Do I see anything of that nature that we can maybe sneak that bad boy in? They do have resources and supplies very clearly. The only thing that Shermie can see on the outside right now is a couple covered wagons that may or may not have supplies actively in them. The keep is large enough. There's like three distinct towers. These towers are not larger than the rest of the wall. If anything, they're maybe five feet taller. But it's big enough that there may be storage rooms within the keep itself. I will relay that to Telve. Understood. It's, it's hard to determine if anything is to actually be brought in. That is unfortunate. Well, if we can get close enough, I would be more than happy to send my book up above the walls. It may not be able to travel Can we disguise it to, to look like far. a bird? Do you have uh, some type of bird disguise with you? No, that's Lucian you're thinking of. Oh, that's unfortunate. I mean, we did steal some feathers. Oh, that is true. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like you only picked four of them. That is also true. I don't think four is going to cover a book, believably, to make it a bird. Yeah, why didn't you get more than four feathers? <laughs> I think four is a, a fine number, Thorn. Thank you. Um, if... All we want is to get the book closer to the keep. I could try to sneak. I am small, I can keep myself out of sight. I would also be fine to maybe take a peek around the outside, like we had proposed, and maybe we use the book as uh, a last resort if we can't spot any other way in. Okay, go. I'm getting really impatient. I'm just going to go at this point. Wait, Kyrus, Kyrus. Hmm? Suppose Thorne approaches with the book so that Helve can see or hear, sense things through it, while Shermie and I scout to circumnavigate the keep. You and Daramir and Telve stay back and have your horse, your your thing, Winnie, or whatever it does, if any of us get in trouble. Basically, you, you three plus the steed would be on Overwatch while we scout ahead. Okay, as long as we're doing something. All right, let's move out. Let's have uh, the three scouts each make dexterity checks. Sneaking is definitely allowed and encouraged. I have the ability vanish, so I can roll 2d20 and take the higher result. Nice. Awesome. Which doesn't help (laughs) if I roll two threes. What just happened? Okay, 23 for Jeremy, sneaking. Okay. Toman, maybe you should just stay put. <laughs> Toman's coming up behind <laughs> Sherman. <Crunch. laughs> hey, Toman got a 14. The uh, guards, it's its the third shift. They're tired. They're uh, catching up on a little gossip, but they're really drowsy while they're doing it. They do not see any of us. They might notice Toman and think that he's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Tomin and uh, Shermi can do a full loop of the uh, keep. The keep is big enough to have uh, supply warehouses, big enough that there's probably some lodging inside it, but it's not a full castle. It's not like a city. It's an outpost. So they can do a full loop pretty easily, staying mostly within the tree line, only going across the clearing in like brief stints. Thorn can get pretty close to the keep as well. We'll get back to Thorn in just a second. Toman and Shermie would see a back door. It looks like another gateway. The front one and the back one both appear to be uh, double doors that are able to be 
deadbolted from the inside, just have like a beam dropped across it to hold it in place. And the back one looks like there are also a couple guards there with torches. Two instead of four, but they're up in the parapet, so they'd be hard to reach. And that's really the only thing of note that Toman and uh, Shermie would see before getting back to the party. Thorn manages to slink close enough to the keep that you are within range of tossing the book over, which will require a strength check. Oh no. <laughs> just the sound that a book makes when you throw it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just flying through the air. All the pages. This is a good plan. This is, is going to go so poorly. I'm glad you listened to okay. Kira's on this point. I don't have anything that could help me with this. DC 14. From where we're standing and watching, can we see Thorin attempt this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, Shermie can for sure. Thorn reaches the spot by the wall and looks up and down at the book and back up. She's going to throw the book. <laughs> oh, God. I guess we're doing this. And <laughs> turns around. Can't, is too far to like actually see you guys, but like looks in your general direction. And <laughs> it's just... She didn't know what she was exactly getting herself into and gives it her best go and launches this book. And how tall is Thorn? Um, three feet tall. Okay, so it's seven times your, your body height. <laughs> oh, God. I'm so... I'm not hopeful. I got a 14. I said DC 14. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you did it! Vindication! <laughs> how did she do that? Wow. As the book flies over, barely flies over, the the <laughs> noise like gives some wind <laughs> resistance. You hear it kind of thunk on the parapet. Um, I'm going to need you to make a luck check. Because you only just met the strength DC, the uh, DC for the luck check is going to be higher. And that's just going to determine where the book lands for optimal reconnaissance. Okay. I'm ready. DC 18 I love rolling. for this. DC 18? Ooh, ah! so close. Oh. It's a 17. All right. So you hear the book thunk on uh, the uh, upper walkway. So it's not fully in the keep necessarily. But what all is Telve able to do, see, detect? Uh, very well. I guess we are doing this. I'm going to need someone to hold me. Excuse me? I believe I made myself quite clear. Okay. Toman picks him up. Thank you. And as soon as you pick up Telva, he just goes like limp noodle and his <laughs> eyes glaze over as I am blind and deafened. And I've put all of my senses in the book and I'm going to choose for my spectral appendages to be invisible, arms and legs invisibly sprout out of the book and I can run wow. and I can see and I can hear and I can talk <laughs> as a book with arms and legs. I'm a real That's boy. awesome. Okay. Should we be concerned? Lip noodle. <laughs> so, Shermie, what should we draw on his face? Oh, yeah. A mustache? I've always wanted to see Telve with a mustache. Oh, that's right. You two are a thing, right? <laughs> well, we are, we're friendly. We're figuring it out. What, is, what does that mean? We've just been so busy since that infiltration, and now we're doing it once more. We just haven't had time to really sit down and... And Gordon is just so damn loud that you can't even think when he's around. <laughs> yep, that's fair. Oh wait, I've always wait. Can I can I dip my thumb in the ink and just do a Simba across his forehead? <laughs> yes. I'm kind of holding him like that already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roger, you can move around freely. I will stop you if the book gets spotted. Telve in his new book body is going to be as quiet as a book with spectral arms and legs possibly can be. <laughs> and uh, I think it sounds a little something like this. <laughs> Whenever he's running across this and Telve as a book is going to look uh, to the left where there seems to be some top of a small watchtower. And it's going to look over to the right where it seems like the bridge extends a little bit further and is going to uh, hurriedly run over towards the top of the watchtower over towards the left and see if there's anything that looks like uh, if there's any boxes or bags or crates or any objects or items. And it looks like there seems to be some type of uh, 
uh, some type of small crate over here and is going to go over there and just like lay up against it and wait. He's going to do this in increments. As this occurs, you hear one of the auxiliaries on the top of the keep here say, Oi, is that a book? <laughs> <laughs> and then another one, uh, the other one on the top says, Did uh, Cassius words or another magic item? Is that what this is? Someone from down below. I don't remember hearing anything about any any shipment. And so one of the ones on the top starts heading over in the direction of the book. Now, the crate you said you were up against, that's actually, it's kind of hard to see because there's no lighting. Because you're a book and right next to it, I'll move the torch over so you can see it. It is a stairwell down deeper into the keep. To lean up against whatever like railing or like wooden little object that is there just for the brief moment uh, waiting for any noise to die down and through possess object it says that i am blind and deafened but not incapable of speaking through my body and so my body that is currently <laughs> being drawn on and is being held up you all will just hear the word <laughs> cassius that is it what the, the fuck is that can he see it? <laughs> does he talk in his sleep Oh, maybe. And then I'm going to take off heading to what I, I think would be a, a northern direction. And there's no way. I'm going <laughs> to kind of look over and I'm going to say in my head, which is a book. I still think that it's better to see what I can see from somewhere up high. And I'm going to begin to take off heading uh, towards the next little watchtower area. I'm going to move in burst of 10 feet. And at every 10 feet, I'd like to make some type of like awareness check, if that's okay. Okay, sure. Go ahead and move the first 10 feet. You hear the first guard say, It is a book. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make an awareness check. Best plan. <laughs> Only good things can happen right now. <laughs> All right. It's going to be a 12. Okay. Well, given that the guard brought one of the torches with him, you see a little bit more of the keep layout than uh, you did previously. So it looks like the uh, middle of the keep is just a hard-packed dirt courtyard. There appear to be a, a series of uh, one-story buildings. Fairly tall. Again, the outside of the keep is 20 feet tall. The buildings the walkways are variably between 15 and 18 feet tall and it appears from where you are you can vaguely make out three uh, buildings or three rooms to the north of you and three to the or sorry two to the east of you plus the one that you are on the uh, ones to the north of you are all more compressed from east to west the keep is wider than it is deep awesome doing a little bit of book shuffling and hearing it is a book i'm going to just like collapse onto the ground like andy's coming and <laughs> and just and lay there on the ground i thought you were gonna say you were gonna book it <laughs> i know there, there were so many options there were so many options and I, I went with that one yeah but andy's sitting right there <laughs> the uh, guard approaches looks down at the book what should i do with this I don't know. Did Cassius order one? You say he did not. Are you certain? Well, no. I'm not. I'm not certain. I don't know. Throw it in. Throw it in storage. He'll uh, pick it up. The group who is holding my body would hear Telve say, "I have been captured." <laughs> <laughs> that took like two, two minutes. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna. I'm gonna stay in the book. So I'm gonna stay limp noodle. <laughs> Do we go help? <laughs> Where are they going to throw him? The library? Hmm. What if they burn the book? He's very flammable. He's very flammable. They have torches. Oh, no. Uh, for the record, Nathan, when they go to pick me up, I retract my book arms and book legs. The guard takes you down that stairwell that you saw earlier, drops you in an open crate, puts the lid on, and then moves another crate on top of it. <laughs> what a classic what a classic move that's how I store things <laughs> and then you hear the footsteps going back up the ladder coming out of Telve's limp noodle body you would hear him say again they have me I am in a box it is a very dark southwest tower uh, it appears that I am stuck in here 
I mean, he can't hear us, right? So how do we I tell would him, tell him to come? snap out of it, but he <laughs> can't. <laughs> I don't think we thought this through. I don't know if you want to say anything back to me. I, I cannot hear you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just know... Somebody could slap him? If I exit these states, I may not be able to do it again successfully. I mean, that would be great. We need you right now. I don't want to carry you off. He can't. He can't hear you, Tom. I know he can't. Hear me. It's so frustrating. <laughs> Again, if if you are saying something, I can't hear you. You'll have to give me some type of sign or something. Do we just leave him? Just start shaking him. <laughs> I don't think he could feel either. Yeah. All right. Let's just put him by this tree. Should Sherman go and sneak up and just like tap on that wall or something? If you want me to come back, uh, wait for exactly How five seconds. How does he seconds. always respond at the perfect time? <laughs> I don't understand. If if you don't if you don't want me to 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 stay, um, uh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I am. I I don't know if you know this about me, but I am somewhat claustrophobic. Oh, I say we leave him. Uh, maybe <laughs> we should just try to like you know go in, come up with some kind of excuse. Darumi, you're like a blacksmith, right? Can we say you're here to f- fix something? Yeah, I could probably do that. At midnight. It's, it's rather early. Yeah, I don't... How do they know how far we traveled? True. I could try to sell them fake gems. I could At pretend midnight. to be a wandering, a <laughs> wandering <do> traveler. <laughs> looking for... Well, we can try we the blacksmith thing. Okay. We could bring Telve's body and just say we traveled a long way and he's hurt and... And this is the first place we found, right? I mean, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a mustache. <laughs> it's all drawn on. <laughs> Tomen lifts up an arm and drops it. It flops down. We can that tell face. I mean, it's pretty convincing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what of your steed? Are we going to leave it here? Oh, I was going to use it to tout the body, but he can stay, I guess. I just, it's frightening to... <laughs> be quite frank. <laughs> I mean, we can leave him, I guess. Maybe frightening's the point. Okay, Toman's carrying Telve's body. Who else is going? I can go. Yeah, I'll go. Strength in numbers. I think we should all go if this is the move. It's probably gonna go sideways. I'm pretty good at lying. Let's see. Yeah. Squidge, see, stay here. Close your eyes so you don't see any deer. Or moose. <laughs> you know, that, that doesn't really make it any better. I know they're still out there. <laughs> and then it just gives you, like, really sad eyes. <laughs> you'll, you'll, if, if you see one, just go, I don't know, left. Just. What's the point of bringing me along if I'm not here to fight? We'll get there. You're not sneaky. You could fight the deer. I don't know. I'll give you something to kill after this, no, I promise. No, I can't fight the deer. Not the deer. <laughs> okay, not, not the deer. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Just, just stay here. Storms off. Just sick of this fucking. Are you guys coming? Yes. 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 Yeah, I'm ready. I would assume that I came back after throwing the book. <laughs> we didn't actually discuss that part. <laughs> you made it back at the exact same time. You heard Telvey's body saying, "I've been captured." <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so I did all that for nothing. Is what I'm hearing. Well, technically, you're the reason <laughs> Telvey's been captured. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, let's go, I guess. All right. As the uh, party approaches, let's get the uh, marching order. Telve is unconscious, or looks unconscious, in uh, Toman's arms. Are we approaching the keep like we're asking the neighbors if we can get our ball? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Or, I mean, <laughs> this, this man needs help. Do you have a cup of sugar? We're doing get help. I hate get help. We're not doing get help. (laughs) (laughs) This man's been graffitied upon. Help us. (laughs) Not again. Yeah, we think it's ancient ritualistic drawings on him. He's been trapped inside his own body. It's those Rashalani youth. They're graffitiing everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, Kyrs is up front. Uh, I would be up there with Kyrs. And then I'm sure me and Thorne can bring up the rear. All right. I wouldn't know any of these people, would I? I didn't even think about that. Oh, uh, make a luck check. <sighs> luck, you say? It is a 14. With a 14, I'd say no, you don't know any of these people. Okay. 
once we are within uh, the uh, outer radius of uh, the torchlight, the guards would uh, say, you know, Halt, who goes there? In the name of Rashalon, identify yourselves. And the ones up on the uh, parapets clearly ready some uh, longbows. Kiris would just raise her hand. We need help. K- Kiris. Kiris Mara from Vanith. We found this man. I don't know what's wrong with him. He needs medical assistance. You were the first place we found. Make a charisma check. Deceiving? Deceiving is fine. It's a 16. <sighs> okay. You say you're from Vanith. That's on the other side of the river. That's on the other side of the mountains. What business have you here? Do you not know? Vanith is helping Rashlon in this war. That is not the question I asked you. That is why I am on this side. You ask me why I'm on this side, I am here to help Roshlon. We were out scouting. And what? You said he's been gravely injured. How? I don't know. I said I found him. Look at him. He we looks found him unconscious. Unconscious, certainly. Well, we have not been able to wake him. You can certainly try. <laughs> Sorry, don't I? <laughs> Hey, I, I think this is still a great plan. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to wake him. Drop him here in front of me. Someone's looking to Kiri's for leadership here. Well, put him down. Right, all right. And the uh, guard starts checking your vitals and starts trying to do CPR on you. Tilve. Okay. The cool thing about this spell is that it lasts for an hour, or until the object breaks, or until I take damage. Okay. So if the party would have punched me back there, he would have snapped out of it. But I, he has to. He has to actually take damage to to be forced out of it. Well, proper CPR. They breaks a rib. They break your ribs. Mm. So, yeah. So I'm gonna have him make an intelligence check to determine if he knows proper CPR. <laughs> because oh, if he does, oh you're about God. to take damage. <laughs> What is this series of events? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to end up killing them all. It's all because. <laughs> right. It's just a matter of how it yeah, we, <laughs> we had fun getting there. So military training in Rochelon would probably include some basic medical suturing. No, suturing is cutting into someone. Mm-hmm. Um, the opposite of that. Tourniqueting. Triage. Triage. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to put this at a DC 12 to see if he knows. He knows. <laughs> so I'm going to make an attack against Telve's <laughs> fortitude. <laughs> oh, my fortitude? Broken ribs. Against Telve's fortitude. Okay. <gasps> oh! My ribs are strong. Uh, Your ribs don't do break. I do think you take some damage from proper yeah. CPR. <laughs> so you're no so longer true. choking. You're no longer comatose. You no longer have the helpless condition. And uh, you take two damage. Immediately snaps back to, it was so dark there. (laughs) Oh, well, there you go. Problem solved. How did you do that? Uh, CPR, we learned it in in Rochelon. Certified practice of Rochelon. That was impressive. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Listen, I'm going to be honest. It's late. Can we just camp somewhere? Protocol. I'm sure you understand as someone from Faneth. Can't let anyone in. I thought you were cool. All right. You know, I saved a man's life. What more can I do? What is Telvey doing, by the way? <laughs> just uh, around, surrounded d- by cars. That, th- this, th- the thing with Telvey is, even though that was like a remarkably uh, uncomfortable situation, he is uh, very intelligent and he's keen he is sitting there looking at all of your reactions i'm trying to get a read on what this situation is nathan if you'll allow it could i do like uh, like an empathy role to see if i can read the the vibe of what is appropriately happening in the situation to like st- try to fit my emotions and reactions correctly sure yeah 10 all the context you have is that this is definitely the keep that you scouted that you saw from the distance you know geographically exactly where you are cool his eyes are darting from each of you one at a time trying to read the correct cue and seems like he is unable to fully lock on to what i'm supposed to be reacting and what i'm supposed to be saying stranger who are you uh, i must 
apologize. I, you may call me Alvaric. Well, is he one of yours? Because he's not one of ours. I he's not one of ours. I can't remember uh, where I'm from. Where are we? One of the guards from above the keep calls down. You are in Roshalani territory. What business had you here? I, I can't recall. It's all blank. And he, like, puts his hands to his heads and begins to, like, roll around and grovel on the ground. <laughs> Listen, I know there's protocol, but this has to be a special case. I mean, it's late. We will be on our way in the morning. You saved his life. Please just... It's one night. We saved his life. Or rather, my uh, my friend there saved his life. That is all that, that Rochelon is obligated to do. We will not provide shelter. All right. Keeps us just start walking away. That's the whole story. Okay. Uh, well, that did not go well. Toman will follow Kiris. You guys can chime in, you know. Listen, I have no other answers other than climb the wall or stab them. Both sound fine to me. Both of my plans have failed. Do you guys have any input here? Uh, maybe intimidation is the right play now when we send the steed. Isn't there a back door? Didn't want to see a back door. Uh, there was a back door, yes, but it's it guarded all the same. Two less, but parapets, guards, all the same. We can quietly take out the guards in the back and sneak through the back door. For the record, did you all just like walk back away from the keep? <laughs> That's my impression of what just <laughs> yeah. happened. I tell me just wanders off into the woods. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because oh, the only thing that he has heard so far is the move is I'm a random stranger. And right. not our responsibility. So how close did Telvey have to be to his book to do things? Because <laughs> that's one of my plans of getting him close, is getting him in range of his book. At this level, for the Awakened Spellbook, I still have to be within 15 feet for oh, okay. it to be A fully Awakened. Yeah, it's, it's really close. Okay. Never mind. Again, with that, Telve walks off into the distance, and I'm gonna make a large, like, like I'm gonna make a large radius, large circle C, coming back to where you all were previously, hoping that yet's where you went back to. Uh, I just didn't want to be seen going the same direction with you all. All right, we are all back in the woods now. So back door. Tell Telve, were you able to see anything, or how many were inside? I was able to see a very uh, additional units on top of the parapets. I saw, uh, heard additional voices calling out. Uh, something about this uh, Cassigus and the ordering of magic items. Uh, they seem to have almost confused me with some type of shipment that was brought in here. Uh, I saw there were several other rooms, and it did not appear as if there was much in the interior. Uh, center area of the keep. I will say, if this Cassius individual is bringing in some type of magic items here, we should be additionally cautious. Uh, who is to say what they have stockpiled this place with? Right. Well, if we try to sneak through the back, we'll have to deal with the gods that are atop the parapet. And do so quietly, or else they'll right. just alert all the others. I'm afraid I must say I might not be the same caliber of assistance without my book. Right, that was a bit narrow-sided. Oftentimes you must take great risk to find great reward. It was a valiant attempt. So do we just take out the two at the back, or do we try to make a distraction to bring them away from the door? Toman glances at the steed. We could spook them. Start a fire. Listen, in the beginning, I said we set the tents on fire, and everybody's like, that's dangerous. Except for you, Oh, Tom. I was right there with you, yeah. See? We're back to the fire tents. I'm on board with the fire tents. Could tent. we send the steeds running in at the back door? Just send him charging at the door? For what purpose? To cause a commotion, to pull attention, to maybe break the door down? Listen, there's a lot of ideas here. Just tell me one, because I don't want to pick this time. The last two times went wrong. <sighs> Well, we came here to be stealthy, no? Maybe we, we send this We came steed. here to rescue uh, a double agent. Mm -hmm. And it seems that stealth is unfortunately not working. I am beginning to feel like setting things on fire is a good idea. Fire. Fire. Any means necessary, extract the goods. I am not opposed to this idea. 
I have a small concern with the with the burning plan. Uh, maybe we keep the flames away from the southwest tower. Where are the tents? <laughs> uh, they'd be on like, yeah, they would be near the southeast tower, so that okay. would not be too much of an issue. What direction's the wind blowing? <laughs> <laughs> north, straight north. <laughs> All right, Thorn has pulled out her tinder box and some matches. Are we doing this? Are we going? Let's go. All right. Can we fully flesh out this plan? Who? I'm not sneaky. Now you want to plan? The sneaky. Listen, I've been trying <laughs> to plan this whole time. Maybe the sneaky people go towards the back door if we're going to try to bring them away. We're not all going to try to sneak in, right? That feels pointless at this juncture. There's a lot of us. That is a good point. They have seen uh, all of our faces as well, so I do not think we'll be able to get away. I've lost patience for sneaking. Right. I can look to sneak in if that's uh, possible. If we're not going to do sneaking, we might as well just go and ambush them. Well, maybe we light the tents and see how they respond. If they leave their posts, then we try and get a few in undetected. If they hold their ground, then we... Kill them before they kill our informant. I'll just tell him I was mad at them for not letting me sleep there. All right, let's go. All right, we light. So hit the tents, see how they react, go from there, improvise. I like how our plan is also still just we plan to improvise. (laughs) (laughs) Flawless. Yeah, but but we named it, so we got it. Okay, so everyone, please make a uh, dexterity check. Feel free to add sneaking if you have it. 15 for Shermie. 11 for Telve. A 2 for Daromir. A 0 for Kyrus. <laughs> 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 She's done with this. Daromir is very huffy and puffy and jangling all over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instead of a nat 1, I got a 21. Wow. Scorched you get 10. Nice. As you are all approaching, the two guards on the ground hear you coming, and they... Uh, approach to investigate once they catch sight of some of the silhouettes of uh, the party they say hey we we told you 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 cannot stay here you have to you have to move on now we will get aggressive if you do not again just standard procedure yeah with the 21 am i still hidden because i would still carry on with the plan if i'm not i think you're still hidden immediately seen okay i'm gonna start lighting stuff on fire okay Toman shrugs, pulls the javelin, and chucks it. Let's let's roll initiative. <laughs> 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 ah, fuck it. We tried not to. Uh, we, we got there. Eventually. Oh, you should have let us stay here. Look what we must do now. <laughs> <laughs> if we cannot sleep here, nobody can sleep here. Now I roll a natural twenty. Are you serious? A nat twenty with a minus one for nineteen. Well, you're sneaky, so fits. That is true. I got a ten. Uh, it's healthy. Tilby got a 20. Nice. That is nice. I got a 19. Shermy, 12. And a Daramir. Uh, Daramir rolled a number that is 16. Okay. I think that we will uh, dive back into this next week, though. Oh, <laughs> cruel. Like that. No. Will Tilby get his book? Will the party just give up on this mission altogether? <laughs> what will catch fire? We'll find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> on this craft, the podcast. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. We will be back in your feeds next week. Keep crafting those stories. A huge thank you to all our new quasi real patrons Don Story and Mord Sight. Thank you all so much for your support. We really appreciate it. 